three, two, one. Good evening. Welcome to the Blue Juju Podcast. I am your host, Jonas, and I'm with my co-host, Ron. How you doing today, sir? Doing great. We uh, ran into a couple technical difficulties uh, the first time around, but uh, we will not be defeated. So uh, in lieu of that, uh, we're going to give it another shot because that's how dedicated we are to you folks. That's right. All right. Um, if you're not familiar with Blue Juju Podcast, which a uh, few people are because we're an up-and-starting podcast, we are uh, basically we do the weird and obscene news, and we, you get to view it through our eyes, and uh, that's basically how we do. We search the interwebs for the the weird and obscene, and we deliver it to you for your entertainment on UStream and BlueJuju.com. Um, if you'd like to leave any comments, uh, we are live streaming right now. Um, we have a message board over on the website, and you can check that out if you like. And uh, you might be able to get a comment, and we'll, we'll talk to you right here, live, on the air. But that being said, we have a way that we do things. We break things down into categories, and uh, our first category is, of course, headlines. Headlines. We deem important. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to take the first headline. Um, it was a man found dead after 15 years, a skeleton. Well, there's nothing uh, too unusual about that. Uh, hikers are found in ravines, and, uh, you know, people go out into the woods and are lost, so on and so forth. And it was a skeleton, but the unusual thing about this is he was found in bed in apparently his own house. And uh, uh, he didn't have any friends or relatives. And when the authorities finally found him, they said that they had unopened mail there from 1996. So I wonder what clued them in. And just to I don't know. <laughs> it seems like they could have a better response time on that. <laughs> just just throwing it out there. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, a t I'm taking it this guy didn't have any friends or family. or uh, Apparently he, not. So he was an old hermit, but uh, he didn't... Uh, uh, on one of our podcasts, we uh, talked about a guy. I believe he was in Nevada, and he had tons and tons of uh, gold. Gold, yeah, yeah. That, it, that, that I believe they took him a month though to find him. So, and that was because he stenched real bad. <laughs> well, but appar yeah, apparently this was beyond stenching because uh, it was 15 years ago. So I, I doubt if there was, you know, um, doubt if there was too much smell in the place. Of course, the roof had probably collapsed in that that time, probably. Wonder uh, maybe that was the the roof collapse. That is really <laughs> weird because you would think you know they, you would you would think you would see some signs like like no I mowed the lawn for a little while, <laughs> you know you had uh, you have five years of mail on your front step, uh, <laughs> you know yeah. all all the clues that say <coughs> hey something has gone awry, but uh, you know where where'd you say this was again? This is France. France. Yeah, uh, well, you know, psh, enough said. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Those Frenchies. Those Frenchies. Us, am us Americans don't like them Frenchies, even though they're our allies. We're always they bail. In they in invented freedom french fries uh, that's true i no, guess that's right and uh, I, d I don't know the statistics on that i'm not sure if that's an accurate statement but uh, yeah and maybe and and for all those women out there they uh, invented french kissing yeah oh, mm -hmm. yeah very nice well yeah you know um i guess they, th did. Th they invented all the good stuff then i guess i can't hate on too bad yeah what you drinking there buddy oh it's it's something rare and imported uh He's just uh, <laughs> giving giving me the first taste of Red Bull, or yeah, it's called Big Red. Big Red, yeah, and uh, hey, this stuff is uh, really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a lot of people know this. Uh, in up north, they have this in uh, the northern states, but uh, down here, not to be found. It's rare. But uh, here in South Florida, or Florida in general, um, just found it. It's uh, it was an astonishing discovery for me, and. Uh, I've I've shared the joy with my compadre over here. <laughs> I'm sure it brought back back memories. It's it's pretty good. It's not it's tasty. But anyway, moving on with the show. Um, 
I have ran across a little uh, piece of gold, sir. Okay. And uh, that piece of gold uh, was delivered in the form of a, of a woman that is clueless. Oh, yeah. And so uh, what happened with this lady, she had called in to a, uh, a radio station because she had had some problems um, with deer. And uh, instead of s- explaining it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys listen to a little, a little piece of this audio gold. All right? Beautiful. Here, here we go. What? May we welcome back <laughs> to the show, Fargo Zone. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't believe all this hubbub. Holy cow. Um, well, first of all, um, can I just say thank you to this is you the dear lady. human being to read? Mm-hmm. So nice to me the last time I was on the radio with you. Oh. They changed the <laughs> video. The uh, uh, sucker? Oh, wow. Well. I don't know if you realize you're willing to do over a million views on YouTube. Oh, Oh, okay, so oh my gosh. I mean, they got us, huh? Well, anyway, um, I'll go ahead and explain it. Uh, what this lady did is she called into this radio station, and she was uh, under the impression that deer uh, knew how to read, and mm-hmm. uh, and basically she said to the radio personality that if the government would move those signs Every over to a safer place, then hey, she wouldn't have as many accidents. You yeah. Know? And uh, the, the, the guy didn't know exactly what to say. He, he had asked the lady, he was like, are you kidding? You know, because it's idiotic, you know. Obviously, deer can't read signs, but she was convinced that if they would move it to a safer crossing place, then uh, they could save deer's lives and uh, less trouble for her. But apparently, um, I just had just gone to the website, but they had, um, they had the video, the audio of her uh, saying that earlier, but now they've switched it to her saying, because b- I guess they've got quite a bit of views on YouTube because of it. And... Uh, now she's explaining, I guess herself, why uh, why that happened. But why she was so stupid. Why she was so stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, and and I listened to it, and and uh, you know the scary part was that she was uh, very articulate, except that the fact that there there was no uh, logic involved in uh, what she was saying, and she kept adamantly uh, saying uh, that they should move the signs. And one of the things that she said is they should move them to where there are school crossings. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> so, it, it yeah. would be better uh, if children had to deal with this problem. <laughs> right. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's saying if the deers could actually read. See, I, I'm falling into this line of thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she just did not get the, the fact that uh, what she was saying was totally illogical. And now she's backpedaling and and uh, and and explaining away uh, what actually was going on. but uh, After a mere uh, million some odd views on YouTube, she's like, well... <laughs> no, this is what I really meant. No, nah, she, she's an idiot. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, she is. You know, but that, that's what, like... An what articulate you, idiot. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you were saying. It's like, you know, she seemed intelligent, but that just wasn't the case. She has a fairly good grasp of the language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe there's some mental disorder issues there. You know, move the signs, the deer will follow. Move yeah. the signs, the well, deer will follow. Well, she was she was blaming it on the government. She was saying, <laughs> she was saying that they had put the signs in the wrong place. So that's right. And uh, obviously, you know, if they would just move the signs, then problem solved. But well, uh, that just wasn't the case. Why don't they just, you know, instead of that, they could put like LEDs on the deer, and then that way you wouldn't have to have, have any signs. There you go. That's strong logic, right yeah. there, folks. And. And then the deer, the, <laughs> the deer move around, you know, especially at night when you can't see them, and you don't hit them because they got LEDs on. That's right. Mm-hmm. Good call. I wouldn't yeah. have thought of that. Mm. <laughs> I guess we're moving on. But uh, <laughs> what, what else you got for me, sir? Oh, okay. Well, in uh, in New Jersey, there was a uh, a episode of counterfeiting, and uh, this is going to hit home because uh, it's uh, a uh, a subject near and dear to everybody and that's food ah. and uh, y- you know I I get everybody's interest when when there's food there uh, but not just any food you know I mean if you're gonna have a burger you're gonna have excuse me cheese on it you know lettuce tomato onions most people they want their ketchup and not just any ketchup Heinz ketchup mm. right All right right I'm with you I'm, yeah. fo- I'm following you they found a counterfeiting operation of ketchup. No. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was just, uh, I cannot shivers. stand. I personally won't stand for this. No. You know, wreck yeah. my wreck my economy. Screw <laughs> screw the country over, but don't mess with my ketchup. Don't mess with my burger. <laughs> okay. And uh, what tipped him off is that, and this was in uh, Dover, New Jersey. What tipped him off was a rancid stench from a from a uh, uh, storage locker, a, a storage area. So uh, they went in there, and apparently what had happened, they had tons and tons of this uh, counterfeit ketchup, and uh, shelves collapsed, or uh, some of the stacking collapsed, So, and some of these... Uh, yeah, they had counterfeit shelves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, they were just sloppy right. about this, you know. <coughs> and so the ketchup went out of some of the plastic bottles and uh, started to uh, smell, and that alerted them. And the reason they knew it was a counterfeit operation is because they found empty bottles and labels and uh, equipment to put the ketchup in the bottles. Hmm. Horrible, horrible. Interesting. And, yeah. And they found 50,000 pounds of ketchup. Hmm. Mm, yeah. So there was a lot of ketchup there. Um, now, Heinz investigated there uh, along with the police and said that uh, they uh, believed that None of this counterfeit um, ketchup found its way way to the shelves, but uh, how can they be sure? And I'm saying that oh, you can't be sure, sir. <laughs> I know. Uh, and even if e even if they uh, thought that there were some bottles that went to the shelves, and there was probably a lot of it that did, they're not going to say that because they're not going to say that our uh, our fine product here has been counterfeited and some of you people actually bought this stuff, and you didn't know any better. <laughs> the nerve. <laughs> the nerve. I mean, I'm, right. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight. This is ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I thought I was safe, and now I hear there's counterfeiters running around. This yeah. is preposterous. Catch it for all, you know, intents and purposes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see here. I guess um, <clears throat> I did have a uh, another okay. news story. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, um, have you heard of this uh, reality TV? It's called Breaking Amish. Uh, now I have. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> told you about it, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, it, but uh, it's still quite interesting. Yes. But uh, okay, well, on this show, um, Breaking Amish, uh, they have a few cast members, and uh, they're all from a Amish community in Pennsylvania because that's where they all come from. Oh, not all Amish people, but that's where they originate from, and. Uh, Basically, um, they had gotten into a discussion, and these kids have been moved to New York City during Ramadan, and uh, which is their or Rumspire or something like that. That's what it's called whenever they leave for their whatever. <laughs> oh and yeah, what eighteen to twenty-one? Is something it? like that. Yeah. Yeah, eighteen to twenty-one, so that they can they can sow their wild oats. Yeah, get it out of the system, <laughs> guys and girls. That's you know, right. Because well, they have a choice. They they can either stay in the English world or they can uh, they can return to their Amish lifestyle. Well, um, in one of these conversations in the uh, in the um, what do they call it? Reality TV uh -huh. show uh, that they go into this in depth discussion about how Amish people uh, let's see fornicate with their livestock. Um, no. Nah. Yes. And uh, this, this is coming directly from the horse's mouth, if mm. you will. <laughs> <laughs> horses don't like it either. No, the horses don't <laughs> like it. But um, the the guy was adamant. He was saying that the Amish are sexually uh, repressed, and uh, basically it happens more than you'd like to think. So apparently there's – oh, and they're incestuous. And so uh, the, the, he's saying they have uh, several cases where uh, people marry within their family, first cousins, second cousins, that kind of thing. And uh, also have a bestiality problem. So the Amish aren't as innocent as we thought. Well, you know, this there's lots of taboos against uh, bestiality in uh, I would like to think all so. cultures. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And all for good reason, I would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it bothers the livestock. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a prude by any, by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but, um, you know, I do draw the line. <laughs> Don't mess with the livestock. Well, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> I, you know, I can't even get behind the logic of thinking, because um, like I said, we had broadcast about a gentleman that um, had a donkey mm -hmm. um, in, Florida. in Florida. Yeah, yeah. 
that uh, he was uh, doing the deed to, and he got in trouble. But then he berated the state of Florida for having uh, weird bestiality laws. That's right. And because uh, it wasn't his fault. I mean, there was nothing wrong with him. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it, it was obviously the state of Florida that was all screwed up. But uh, anyway, and so like I said, I can't even get behind the logic of uh, you know why you would go and do that. <laughs> but well, the, the Amish uh, probably have a lot of problems, and uh, hey, they're probably a dying culture. Uh, like the Shakers and, uh, you know, and, and actually the Quakers. And the Quakers are going to get up in arms and say, oh, we're not a dying culture, but there's lots of dying religions in the world. I, b- I was raised a Quaker. <laughs> were you? Yeah, I was. Well, me too. Yeah. Well, no, my, my I really was. I was raised a Quaker. Um, ask, uh, ask my, you know, you know my mother well. Yeah. And uh, ask her. She'll, uh, she'll tell you. <laughs> so you went to Quaker Church, huh? I did. I went to Quaker Church uh, all through, um, I don't know, since I was a kid, uh, really young, five years old, to until I moved to Florida, and then I ended up uh, actually joining a Quaker Church in Florida, and uh, and then let's see here, what else? Yeah, that was pretty much it. But then you know the whole thing kind of fell to the wayside when I was about 14, 15 years old, something like that. I haven't really gone uh went out for that uh, Amish holiday and never returned. Well right. well there's a difference between Quakers oh, and Oh I know. The <laughs> there's a big difference. <laughs> Mainly I the incest and the bestiality thing. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the main focus I want you I, to I, I don't I don't want I don't want to be associated with the the the, the Amish and their, their their strange ways. You well, know, well when the, people think about Amish people they think about the, the guy on the Quaker Oats box. You know, and they're like, oh, that's Amish, and uh, like, or, or or that's Quaker, uh, that's Quaker. Quaker right? yeah, it's not Quaker. Well, it's, the, uh, the, the, the Quakers have their own skeletons. You well, know, I mean, every religion does. Oh you yeah, know? I'm sure. Uh, you know, they th- they were supposed to be frugal, but they were also, you know, there, there's also a lot of Quaker slave traders. You know, right. So well, I mean, that's just in, that's in all of our pasts. You know, if you're American, so right. You know, yeah, so there's can't really get away from that one. Th- right. I, any religion, you're going to have problems, you know, because you got people in there. <laughs> this is true. But uh, now that I've divulged my entire past, <laughs> I'll, uh, thee and thou. <laughs> no, thou. I, I want. I want to restate: not Amish. <laughs> yeah. Not Amish. Um, <laughs> I'm not Quaker either. I'm, I, I haven't practiced that in quite some time. Well, but yeah, my. Uh, my uh, old grandfather on one of my uh, on my father's side. Now he was Quaker. You know, what? I think I'm gonna make a meme on the internet. I was like, you will have a Quaker there, and I'll say, at least I'm not a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm not that's Amish. Ju- that's <laughs> just silly. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess we'll move on to uh, what space news. Space news. Yeah. There we go. I got one. Hold on. Space news. And technology. Okay. Well, um, this is interesting. Uh, uh, amateur astronomers have won up the professionals. Hmm. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Continue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amateur astronomers have found a planet with four suns. Hmm. That is, yeah. that is something. Well, <coughs> what it is is the, uh, the suns that the initial planet uh, orbits around is a binary system. So there's two suns, right? And one's orbiting the other. Uh, from the artist's description, it looks like it's a a blue giant and a red dwarf, and the red dwarf is o- orbiting the blue giant. Okay, and that's one uh, part of component of the system. And then the planets are orbiting those two suns, right? And then on the outskirts of that solar system, I don't know, light, a couple light years away, maybe something like that, there's another binary system with one sun orbiting the other sun, and that system orbits the first solar system. So you have a, uh, you know, a, a five part at least mm-hmm. solar system. And there may be other planets around e- either one of these solar systems. Nope. Uh, no, I, I was actually I was, I was saying uh, the shotgun mic's picking you up really loud, so you don't have to you don't have to yell into it. Uh, okay. Just giving you a heads up. Uh, I'm being bad. No, I'm just uh, watching the levels over here because of our little mishap last time. Oh, okay. But uh, but okay. Uh, uh, no, I was just I was just uh, I didn't want to say it out loud, but since 
<laughs> since I had to. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. But uh, no, I, like I said, that's fascinating. Um, all the stuff that we're getting from these new telescopes that we have are really kind of paying off because at least it's given a, us an insight. I mean, can you imagine that we've been around this long and we really have no grasp of what's out there? You know, um, so I mean, for finally to be able to, you know, get some, some, some real data of what we're surrounded by is, uh, well, it's like a breath of fresh air to be honest with you because. You know, bef- I, I'm, when I was growing up, I mean, shoot, you know, you didn't have any knowledge of the solar system, uh, you know, outer, outer space or anything, you know. Uh, they were still Very little, yeah. Well, they were still discovering inner planets, you know. Right. So now we've moved on, and I'm very happy to see the progress here. Yeah, didn't you have a, uh, I, I a, do. a theory about the... Um, yes, and that actually ties into my space news and technology. Okay. Um, well... Uh, basically, <coughs> my theory was there always has to be, if you're looking for intelligent life in the universe, right, there has to be a first. Mm-hmm. You know, there has to be that first intelligent civilization. And if you're the first, then you, you would be looking um, for another intelligent life form. Right. But there wouldn't be any. Uh-huh. You know, you'd be in this huge, massive thing by yourself. Um, not necessarily you're the only organism, but the, the only intelligent life. We're number one. <laughs> so, like I said, th- it's not probable. I'm not, uh, you know, but it's possible. Not likely at all. <laughs> right. But uh, the thing is, like I said, it is possible. You know, it's like it's like winning the lottery. It's, it's, it is possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just not uh, probable. Well, then there's another possibility. There may have been uh, a much older s- civilization, and th- they may have died out, or they may have destroyed themselves. Mm. Uh, and, you know, that's just as possible as my theory. Yeah, <laughs> so. or, or uh, they just decided uh, to move on to a different universe, or uh, hey, they they left the known universe and figured out that there was another one. Who knows? But I said that to say this. Okay. Um, in science news, uh-huh. um, we have made a discovery that um, disc-shaped galaxies, um, basically they were thought um, to have formed completely 8 billion years ago. So that's a long span of time. You're thinking, wow, that thing's been around for 8 billion years. It's a strong possibility that they will have some life on there, probably intelligent life. Um, in this one galaxy alone, they count trillions of stars. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, But um, just recently, these, uh, the news has come out that um, the, our, the disk galaxies, um, like our own Milky Way and uh, the Andromeda galaxy, um, haven't are just now at its uh, highest forming rate. So, I mean, they haven't, it wasn't already formed 8 billion years ago. It's gotten to the point from now. So, I mean, it's they're, they said that all disk galaxies are just, you know, are formed, you know, mm-hmm. are, are in the process of being formed. So, if, in theory, the Big Bang happened all at once, mm-hmm. and we're all maturing at the same time, then who knows? You know, yeah, could you be know. number one. Well, could Doubtful. Be. <laughs> Or maybe they're just having as big as problems as we are getting off a rock, you know? (laughs) Yeah, so what I get from that is that uh, galaxies are still being formed, and uh, or they're a lot uh, older or younger than uh, we might think, right? Yeah, and they all they all don't form at the same rate, obviously. But um, they're saying that they figure they that these disk galaxies have been stable for eight billion years, and that's just not the case. Um, they've been evolving as long as ours has, and ours is still evolving, and, and, mm. their, and theirs are still evolving. So um, to get into a steady state, apparently, it takes a very long time because, uh, you know, obviously there's some craziness going on mm-hmm. there. I've also seen pictures of galaxies in collision, which is uh, more common than, w- than we might think, that uh, sooner or later one galaxy will run into the other galaxy and will be... Uh, uh, appropriated, you know. I can I can imagine the the cosmic uh, mayhem that would go on when one galaxy invades another galaxy. Oh yeah. You know, or the bigger one wins and the smaller one is absorbed, or they might have two that are of roughly equal size and they've got all kinds of shapes and forms. And you know, yeah, like I said, the possibilities are endless. That's why I mean I could I could talk all day about this stuff, but I guess we'll. We'll move on to the. You have another story in space news, right? Well, yeah. Oh, well, this is technology. Or technology. Yeah, technology. Oh, right. Now, uh, <coughs> there's all kinds of technology, <laughs> and uh, 
I hadn't uh, ever thought of this, and uh, it uh, is quite interesting in its own way. Uh, you be the judge of why it's interesting, but uh, a man in England has invented the world's fastest stroller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, fortunately for baby, uh, the baby of his girlfriend, uh, sh she will not let him uh, drive the baby in the 50 mile per hour. That's probably best. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that this guy is, I, I, I don't think he's insane or, or what. I think he's a, a little on the strange side because he has a, uh, a crib here. It's made out of sheet metal. Uh, looks like it's got a hood that would go in any kitchen. And uh, he's got a platform that he uh, follows the uh, crib behind. And uh, this is on, uh, well, all you got to do is uh, look up uh, on Google or DuckDuckGo or another search engine. Uh, Bing. Bing, yeah. <laughs> the world's fastest stroller. And you'll see pictures of the guy. They even have a, uh, a video. That's not a stroller. That's a hauler. <laughs> <laughs> I said that last time, but I had to get it in again. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. no one's going to see that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> Unless you were there for the bad whatever. <laughs> we, we made it. We made it. We both made some mistakes. So, um, no, you're right. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking that this guy uh, used this as, a, as an excuse. He uh, really wanted to make a go-kart, uh, but he told his girlfriend that he was working on a stroller in the garage, and she says, oh, great, honey. All right, a stroller. Oh, a stroller. That sounds awesome. He, he just neglected the... In the back of his mind, he's like, I'm making a hauler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm making enough to carry a picnic table, you know, the works, a tent, you know, and I'm going to go someplace with this, but uh, yes... Uh, it's an it's an idea that is never going to have its time. Mm. I'm I'm sure of it, unless well, they have stroller races. Well, that's unfortunate. They could have stroller races. This is true. This yeah, is true. You, know, you can't rule that out. Th this 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 is true. A lot of things in life you can't rule out. <laughs> stroller races. <laughs> Throw that out there. Stroller races. You know they got couch races. Stroller races without babies in them. They'll just have like little uh, baby dolls, you know, and then they'll race around the course. And the and the the person that races around the fastest without throwing the baby doll out wins. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've seen. Well, there's there's actually stranger things than that out there, but that's pretty strange. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's true. Yeah. It's it's he, the guy's touch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess the last category on this one, um, they have uh, genetically engineered uh, super rats. Mm. Yes. And. Uh, in a Harvard uh, Harvard experiment, mm. I guess is what you call it. They've had uh, they have enhanced uh, the uh, sense of smell of uh, these rats 500 fold, mm -hmm. and uh, they're more sensitive to TNT, and so they're going to use them as bomb sniffing rats because they'll be cheaper than sending in a dog or a robot well. and more readily available. So uh, they have started genetically engineering, <laughs> genetically engineering uh, super rats. Which will take over the world eventually, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, what they're going to do is they're going to spend $50 million to breed genetic super rats uh, instead of canines because they're smaller and can get into smaller areas. But then they're going to find out that, uh, you know, rats just don't pay attention to <laughs> what people want them to do just like uh, as dogs do. So they'll, they'll have to breed them for like, you know, a couple hundred or a thousand generations like dogs have been bred and by that time uh, you know they won't need bomb sniffing rats anymore yeah they've been experimenting <laughs> with rats for quite some time though. i mean like uh they made them glow already um they've yeah. made uh mind control rats where they can control them with a remote control so uh the, you know i you know this technically if they strap a remote control plus a uh a genetically enhanced rat they could just uh, control it right on in there and then uh, see see what the hell it does. <laughs> yeah, guess. see where the but, uh, where the rat goes. But that's what science does. That's Follow the maze. That's right. uh, that's ingenuity at its uh, highest there. So fear not, yeah. dog lovers. Your dogs are safe now. The rats are here. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm thinking, yeah, no no more uh, dogs being uh, put into danger. Uh, you know, sniffing TNT and such. They're just gonna. Uh, 
you know, use wrapped, yeah. All right. And um, I guess for the month of October, we're doing a little something special. Um, we're doing um, a zombie category. Now, um, because it's in the spirit of Halloween and October, um, if you haven't noticed, Ron and Jonas there. got the little bloody letters. I made that graphic oh myself. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, anyway. That is. <laughs> um, we're giving a shout-out to uh, one person on every podcast that uh, gets in contact with us. And uh, this lucky person uh, just so happens uh, to be going to Roswell, New Mexico. And um, she is the owner of a toy company called Zombie Zoo. And uh, she'll we will she will be out there um, November uh, October twenty second or October twenty seventh um, at Roswell. They're doing a zombie walk, so uh, she'll have a booth set up there, and she'll be selling her zombie zoo animals that she uh, that she makes. And uh, I've seen quite a few. I've seen these things, and uh, they're really well made. Uh, she's uh, she's an artist in her own right. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they are nice. Too. And uh, the best of luck to her out there in Roswell, New Mexico. And uh, hopefully, <coughs> does not uh, get abducted. I guess, <laughs> by the non-aliens. She'll just <laughs> just hold up her toys, and they'll take the toys. There you go. I'm sure they won't know any different. But on with the zombie news. What do you, what do you got for me, sir? Uh, for all you zombie lovers out there, or in my case, haters, you know, you nope. got to hate on them zombies. Don't hate. <laughs> Participate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the zombies in the gate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's my rap career. And you I'm sealed your fate. <laughs> <laughs> I just go dirty from here on out. <laughs> it's going down. They eat your face and eat your taint. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's keep what going. they do all day. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Okay. I, I, can do it. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, it's uh, a little site for those uh, people interested in zombies. Love them, hate them, leave them alone. Uh, like, uh, you know, whoever. Zombieworldnews.com. Everything zombie and, oh. and more. They have uh, different categories, and they'll tell you what's going on in, in the world and different places in the Caribbean. And <coughs> here in the Caribbean, I, I noticed, um, an oil tycoon and billionaire, Hussein Azar Balthar, I guess that's right. I don't know. You can look it up. It's on Zombie News. I'm not going to pronounce it again. Um, He'll have a stroke, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just melt down. <laughs> anyway, this is in Jamaica, and he's made a zombie-proof home. You know, uh, you can roll down the shutters. You can, uh, you know, board it up. Not board it up. Uh, that's passe. You roll down the steel shutters and ride out the zombie apocalypse in style. I only have one question, sir. What? what? Where has this website been all my life? Because that is amazing. I know. <laughs> I know. You can get everything zombie here. And uh, it's... Why haven't I seen it? I don't know. You know, every once in a while you come up with a website that you know that you have to have and you wonder how you ever live without it. Gold. Right there. That's right. I uh, I have uh, some zombie news as well. Okay. Um, it appears that a uh, Miami gentleman, two homeless gentlemen actually, mm. um, this seems to be an epidemic lately. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know the reason. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, the uh, the story itself reads that this 18-year-old uh, homeless man and his 69-year-old homeless man uh, were apparently involved in smoking uh, of the bath salts. <laughs> and um, and in the middle, well, I guess after, this was all caught on a security camera, um, I mind you, for 18 minutes, um, it was caught on the security camera that this 18-year-old gentleman was eating this 69-year-old uh, gentleman's face off. Mm. Um, he first ate the nose, uh, ate the cheeks, and then the eyeballs. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, well, obviously, I... The Zombies are real. The older gentleman obviously did not live. And mm. um, apparently, um, by smoking these bath salts, they caught him on the camera. Um, Ingesting them, huh? Well, growling and making weird noises before he attacked the man. And then he attacked the man. And then, obviously, it took 18 minutes or so, however, mm. to, uh, to stop him or whatever happened. But he is in custody now. And uh, that's another zombie attack for you and uh it's 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 the it's the bath salts man i don't know what it does uh, i don't i have never done bath salts i never will I never will <laughs> but uh me either you know it's obviously not an appetite suppressant 
so <laughs> nah, you get, the, you get the taste for human flesh and uh, we call it the zombie drug. How's that? Uh, there's got to be. I mean, there's got to be something to it. Zombie maker. Yeah. <laughs> Quite strange. Because, I mean, this is, this is obviously not an isolated incident. You know, this has happened um, a couple of times. I mean, yeah. I, you know, this keeps popping up in the news, and uh, right. I'm astounded each time I hear about it. Every, yeah, me too. Uh, like we said last time, uh, drugs. <laughs> uh, uh, flat out, you know. <laughs> right. Um, but it's no drugs like I've ever seen, you know. I, you know, I, you know. Well, I, I have yeah. never been on drugs, and then someone, and then been like, hey, you know what? I'm well, gonna eat. I'm somebody's gonna eat face. somebody's face. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> never occurred to me. <laughs> hmm. Well, there must be something uh, in this drug that uh, causes a primal reaction. I know that, uh, given the right circumstances, uh, some segments of the uh, society uh, will turn cannibalistic or animalistic. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, that it's the reptilian part of your brain, you know. Right. You know, then that's what it, you know, well, after a certain amount of starvation, um, it's been reported that, you know, the mind digresses back to the re reptilian, right. you know, brain. And then, uh, but there's also a lot of cases of cannibalism with sailors and that sort of thing um, because of this, you know, a, mac a lack of malnutrition. And the thing is, uh, if the body needs something, you know, the body's, mm -hmm. body's going to get it. And then, uh, you know, you can be sad about it later. You'd be like, man, I really wish I that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, I wish that didn't happen. <laughs> wish I could erase that from my memory. but Zombie um, remorse. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, that's just not the case. Yeah, that's that's right. But, like, um, children, anyone, anyone listening to this podcast. Don't go zombie. Uh, bath salts. <laughs> I mean, really, I... I, I'm not a guy that's out there that says, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that lets you live your own life and experience what you want to experience. But really, I don't think this is experience is worth it. <laughs> that's that's so. right. And um, sometimes, you know, I mean, you don't want to you don't want to use multiple drugs either. I mean, these these uh, these people are probably using two or three drugs. You know, they probably are using, uh, you know, they're using combinations. But the bath salt seems to be the trigger. Uh, but what happens is when you do two or three different kinds of drugs at once, then uh, you end up with real problems. You can you can kill yourself. How's that? that or other people. Well, that's a real problem. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. When you eat somebody's face, that's a problem. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a definite problem. I'm, I'm saying that most people will agree that whatever drug or combination thereof that uh, these people are doing or have done, stay away from it. Well, just stay away from hard drugs, period. Yeah, you know, that can be. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. what I'm saying. Right, why not? Anyway, um, I guess we're moving on. And uh, about uh, this time on the program, we like to do a little thing that's called Strangest State in the Union. Yeah, I'm winning this time. Here we go. Mm. And now, the Strangest State in the Union. <laughs> So, uh, let me explain this segment a little bit. Uh. Um, <laughs> basically, what we do is uh, we search the interwebs, and we find um, the strangest event that week that happened in a state, and we put the states head-to-head -head uh -huh. in a little segment that we call Strangest State in the Union. Uh, basically, me and Ron here, we do, uh, we do battle. Who has the strangest story? And this week, Ron's up. Go ahead, Ron. But... You see, we both s think that we win, but it's actually up to the viewer. It it's is up to the viewer. <laughs> it's, it's a subjective thing, you know, I mean. But uh, I will argue my point to the death. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may have won. It's questionable. Three, where solid. <laughs> it's questionable whether you won any of them. But other than three that. Three solid. <laughs> I mean, go back We've and check. We've only done three. <laughs> check, check the evidence. Go ahead. Uh, in, yeah, our, in our previous. No, 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 no. Look back at our previously logged podcast, no, and no. and uh, you guys decide who, who who has the winning score here. But like I said, I'm not gonna hold you up. It's this time. It's your time to shine here, sir. So, take it away. Well, <clears throat> as I say, what one people person finds uh, intriguing or interesting or weird, the other will find normal place. But have you ever been to the fork in the road? I have been to a fork in the road. Aha. Uh -huh. Well. In uh, Carlsbad, California, they have the fork in the road, or at least they had the fork in the road, an actual fork in the middle of a median of a, uh, a place where it was a Y, where 
three roads would intersect. So you could go uh, two directions in any direction, if you understand what I mean. Uh, but this is on... Uh, <laughs> This is a this is a national thing. Uh, if you uh, looked up Fork in the Road in uh, Carlsbad, California, it would come up in the actual picture. Um, one uh, one morning, uh, a fork, a giant six foot wooden fork appeared on the median. It was bolted down to the median. Looks like with uh, angle strips. So that it would stand upright, the tines up this way. Right, somebody put a fork in the road. Fork in the road Got on it. the median. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just giving them a visual. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a six foot wooden fork that was, uh, l looked uh, from the picture, it looks very real. It was painted with aluminum paint. Of course, the uh, city officials didn't, uh, weren't laughing at it, the residents liked it. And they said that, that was great. Many people came by, took pictures, but alas, it only lasted a few hours until the city officials were notified and they took down the fork because, you know, rules is rules and you can't have forks in the road. <laughs> and uh, come to find out, it was uh, put there by a, uh, uh, I think it was a 62 year old uh, retired teacher. And he said that he had been thinking about this idea for 30 years. He 30 years, huh? 30 years. I got wasted 30 years on this idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was he waiting for, for God's sake? <laughs> well, he, he was waiting to retire, and he retired from his uh, teaching job. I think he, he, he was a, a math teacher. At, I forget. It was something else that he all right, taught. All right, all right, all right. I've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. But, but th this is good. I mean, he... he uh, this does not drive home strange to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not ringing any strange bells. Yeah, well, you know. You know I, I would say, like, a, a, a sideline or a tourist trap or, you know, something well, the, of that sort. You know, no, no, more, uh, no more outstanding than a large dinosaur um, <laughs> no, no. planted next on the side <laughs> of a road. The, the, you know, this is something that you would see anywhere. No. You know? <laughs> now... But My strangest day of the union. They wanted <laughs> the fork back, but they, like, you know, he, he, he's anonymous because, you know, th they were going to fine him and everything else. But they'll, they'll sign a petition, and sooner or later they'll have their fork back, at least for a day, I'm sure. Right. All right. Now it's showtime. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, there, were, there was an a incident in Bonnell, Florida, and uh, I actually used to live over in this area in Palm Coast. And, uh, I might have to say, uh, Florida has some pretty strange stuff going on. Yeah. But uh, they had stopped a gentleman that was intoxicated, mm. um, which the police normally do. Mm. Um, but in this case, he was riding a horse. A horse. That's right. Mm. And uh, the policeman politely asked, the, I'm sure it was polite, <laughs> yeah. politely asked him to get off the horse. The gentleman refused. So, uh, And he said he was going to his grandmother's house. So apparently the, ho the, poli the Bonnell Police Department had chased this gentleman for a half an hour on the horse, and uh, they caught him. But, funny thing, we don't have any laws about not being able to drive a horse intoxicated. Really? No. So, hmm. uh, he was charged, uh, put for $7,000 bail, uh -huh. and charged with, with? Uh, um, a lewd, con or, yeah, uh, lewd conduct, mm -hmm. and then uh, arrest uh, arresting a... Ah, resisting, resisting arrest um, without violence. Hmm. That's right. Well, I'm saying that they couldn't find anything to charge them on, so they picked something else. What do you think? I think that's a strange state in the union. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> no. I do believe. Anyway, we'll let our viewers decide. That's right. And decide they will. That's right. Well, we do have another category. Yeah, we do? Okay. We do. Okay. And uh, it you is Conspiracy Corner. Aha, that's Un right. Unfortunately, I do not have a uh, I don't have a video for this, but I do have a Hitler baby. Ah. There you go. Hitler baby. <laughs> conspiracy Corner <laughs> right there for your enjoyment. We'll hey. have to, we'll put some music to Hitler baby and uh, maybe some some 
Third Reich music. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right on it. <laughs> but uh, do you have any uh, conspiracies for Conspiracy Corner? We are no way connected to the Nazi party. Oh, the funny story, actually, <laughs> since, since you're talking about the Nazi party. <laughs> <laughs> we do not they like just Nazi sent us a letter the other day <laughs> wanting them to be in their organization. No, um, just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay. No, there was an organization of uh, neo-Nazis. Um, the only people to ever be blocked on Twitter, um, really? but they made it quite public. Um, Twitter just came out with this about uh, two weeks ago. They had um, blocked them in... Uh, well, just block them. They said this neo-Nazi organization, mm-hmm. um, and they have not blocked anybody as far as organization. You know, anybody. But they blocked them. Right. Yeah, they blocked them, and uh, you know it's it's up to Twitter. It's their it's their company. They can do whatever they want. Right. But uh, you know. Right. Anyway, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I went on a little tangent there. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a hard thing. Uh, freedom of speech. Um, you know, there's some very reprehensible this is in germany this organization's in germany oh and uh even so, <laughs> so uh even. Th- so they uh they blocked them ah, they blocked okay. them in germany mm. and then uh but i don't believe they're blocked here mm, probably so, not but but uh you know we'll we'll go on there there are uh People that want to uh, take other people. Hitler baby. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest baby in the union. That's right. <laughs> Look at this guy. You know, you can't. You, that, that's just, that's adorable. <laughs> How could you hate that face? That's right. Boys from Brazil. <laughs> anyway, uh, continue. Uh, you, got, you got something for us? Yeah. Speaking of uh, lacks of freedom, uh, we'll uh, investigate this. Uh, the state of Minnesota uh, banned uh, a free online education site. Mm-hmm. Banned it, yeah. Just said, uh, you know, hey, y- you can't have, you can't have this. Uh, they gave out no degrees, but the courses uh, were of college level, and uh, they uh, they gave the the excuse that. Uh, uh, they used a law that was written that you couldn't have uh, online education courses that weren't accredited. Hmm. Well, the problem here is that there was no accreditation. They were just college-level courses, but you could take them free. Gotcha. But uh, now you can't because uh, apparently they want people that are stupid in Minnesota. So all you uh, folks out there in Minnesota, Ron thinks you're stupid. What do you think about that? <laughs> Hit him up an email uh, at Ron Hodgen. No, nah, wait, wait. <laughs> you're taking my words out of context. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm uh, saying that the Minnesota Office of Higher Education are dumbasses. No, How's that? Okay, that's, that's a little better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that, 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 that is unfortunate that, uh, they, you know, they, they did that. But because, uh, you know, education, well, th- that's what everybody's fighting for on the Internet is um, the free distribution of education um, because it should. And that's what, uh, well, th- the beginning when hackers started out, um, that's what they fought for. They felt that all information should be free information. And uh, yeah, I still agree with that. And now it's kind of morphed into, um, you know, like uh, bigger groups like Anonymous coming in and uh, b- making companies transparent. Well. That way they have someone to, uh, I don't know, basically... Well, someone, someone to reprimand them. <laughs> right. But Basically, what I think here is that uh, they didn't care about the education standards. They didn't care about the uh, fact that it was free college-level courses created by 33 national and international universities. What really bothered them, what really, really bother- bothered them was the free part. Mm. Can't have that free stuff, you know. You know, you can uh, you can go to school, you can get your little degree, and maybe or maybe not get a job, but you can't have any knowledge for free. Mm, not just, good. Yeah. Well, the um, Minnesota Office of Dumbass Education. But uh, <laughs> how much is a library card? Well, this is a <laughs> this is a this is another this is another point. Uh, did you know that uh, there were no free libraries in this country until Andrew Carnegie started the f- first free libraries? Libraries. In what year? Oh yes. <laughs> what year was it? 
uh, just right off the top of my head, I can't remember. Oh, okay. It was probably <laughs> in the tw- 20s or 30s. Bef- before you went on a tirade, I think I'd throw a wrench in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what it is, is it's, it's a matter of precedent. Mm-hmm. Now, every community has a, uh, a, a free public library, but they were not uh, there f- forever. Uh, you know, they didn't, you know, so, you know, they weren't created uh, when civilization, you know, rose from the barbarism of uh, animalistic behavior, mm-hmm. you know. So things like that have to be instituted yeah. or in the case of the Minnesota office of whatever they are well i i (laughs) I agree that the that they should not have done that but they and like you said it is a slippery slope yeah uh, but i mean education there are means of educating yourself you know if you are so inclined yeah but uh just make it more difficult for people why don't you know i mean uh that's you know if you go to a grocery store and you look at it if you look at the products all the ones that they want you to to take or at eye level, they're not above you, they're not below you. They make it very easy for you to take the most expensive things. Okay, well here what they're doing is, is they're saying, okay, we, we really don't care about education. It's obvious. What we care about is the fact that you might get it for free and you might better yourself and you might actually learn how to think. That's a real problem. Mm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, well, you, you know, and if you, yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, like I said, I, I I do agree with you. Um, I you know I I can't conspiracy. Yeah, conspiracy. That's it. But uh, no, I have a conspiracy corner. Okay. Um, well, in recent news, there has been a satellite launched by um by a European group. Okay. And uh, basically, it's been launched towards the moon. And in conspiracy corner, we like to bring light, um, or shine light on conspiracies. And I'm going to. Go ahead and debunk one r- right now. Okay. Um, so there's been a long-going conspiracy that we never landed on the moon in our Apollo, Apollo missions. It was filmed on some back, back lot in Hollywood. Well. Stanley Kubrick. Yes. Well, there is a uh, there is now a satellite in orbit of our moon that is uh, tracking all landing points from Russian cop- cosmonauts, um, M- M103, uh, something like that, mm-hmm. and uh, all Apollo missions. And so far, they have uh, documented 11, 17, and uh, 20, I believe, missions, all the missions or whatever, that have actually gone and landed on the moon. And um, they are currently uh, tracking the very first Apollo mission that landed on the moon and taking detailed photos of each landing site so to I prove that, yes, indeed, we have been on the moon. So, so my theory of uh, the Earth being flat and... And things being filled on the back lot at uh, uh, Columbia Pictures there is just not true. Well, it's uh, it, it's looking Pretty less slim. less less substantiated. <laughs> I'm, so. I'm saying that that's a fake. You know, they're they're telling us this stuff just to st- substantiate their their theories about space travel. Right. You can't. I mean, if the world's flat, you can't really travel in space. You just send the rockets up and they come back down. That's everybody knows that. That makes perfect sense yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anywho, um, let's see here. Did we have anything else that we wanted to say? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, well, oh yeah, speculative. Ah, yes. How did we almost forget that? Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's bring up the clip. Uh, right here it is. Is it speculative or apodictic? Okay, speculative or apodictic? Yes. True or false? Okay, on our last show, I ask you if glass dissolves glass right here. And the answer is yes and no. For our point of view, for the human bodies and human life, or even uh, maybe even the uh, life of the human race, uh, no, it doesn't dissolve. Or the half-life of Big Red. Who knows? <laughs> well, that's going to be here. <laughs> it's going to be here for a very long time. <laughs> for a very long time. After this <laughs> glass dissolves, no doubt. But yes, glass does, do, does dissolve. If you got to remember that, uh, you know, the glass that it came from came from rocks, which, you know, fell apart. So they figured that the lifespan of glass is about a million years, which brings me to the, the possibility that um, if... Uh, 
man has been this, on this world for over a million years, or other civilizations were on this uh, rock before man got here, there wouldn't be much evidence of their existence after a million years. This is true. Right. Uh, probably, but they do have some anomalies that they they can't explain. They found iron rods in coal and coal mines, uh, uh, dinosaur footprints next to people footprints. Uh, you know, so there's some there's some evidence there that mankind is a lot much much older than than. Uh, what we're being told and as I said uh, it, it raises a lot of uh, questions for creationists and evolutionists I concur now I believe that we've been uh, around a really long time and the first civilization probably just uh, you know bit the bullet and then we had to restart you know and, and we might we may have uh, had to restart a couple times you know but uh, it's all about planet X. We're the only uh, <laughs> the only species that's been proven through DNA analysis because uh, there's a thing in uh, science. It's called bottleneck, and it's mm -hmm. when you're t when you're talking about species. Okay. And uh, no species has ever made it through a bottleneck, and it's a, it's a DNA bottleneck basically is mm -hmm. where you don't have enough um, diversity in your DNA strand to uh, for your species to survive because it's uh, basically your mother, your father, your sister, that kind of thing. And obviously, you know, it, you know, the, it, y you the can't, it won't carry on. The species know. becomes too inbred, no matter what you do, right? But um, we are the only species on the planet has gone through two bottlenecks and uh, lived to see it, lived to, lived mm -hmm. to tell our tales, and that's all substantiated uh, through DNA evidence and, and records. Yep. Okay, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, next uh, week's uh, sp speculative or apodictic. Uh, is are the number of uh, the sheer number of bacteria on and in the human body do they outnumber the count of human cells in the body? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wrap yeah. your mind around that one, ladies and gents. Yeah. Anyway. But, but uh, <laughs> I know. Well, I guess you'll just have to tune in uh, next time to figure out that uh, that puzzle we put in front of you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, when our viewers uh want to uh to know something, we'll uh, we'll we'll figure it out for them or or find somebody that does. Uh otherwise, we're doing what we want. We need some feedback here. Yeah, uh, we yeah, we need feedback. Um I understand, but th we are up and starting uh podcast and uh you know, th to to be quite honest with you folks, um, we're going to do this whether you watch it or not. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so this you might as well get on board now because this tr this gravy train ain't stopping. <laughs> That's right. Because uh, uh, we have a stick to itiveness And Gordon, even if you don't watch because you got to exercise because you don't have a job. And we're you we're on to you, Gordon. <laughs> you may get the T-shirt anyway. But you, oh yeah, you will get the t-shirt, but you know, disappointment, yeah. disappointment. Yeah, well, um, Blue Juju is uh, where we broadcast our podcast from, and uh, on that website, um, we offer, well, we do, I, I do uh, web design, and I also do animation and uh, videography, but um, we also, on that website, we're not quite popular enough, but um, we do have a t-shirt section. Yeah, that I have designed a blue Jutu logo for, and it is uh, placed smack dab on that sucker. So, in the future, if you're listening to this podcast, you just, he you just head on over to to bluejutu.com, and then you follow us on Twitter, and you like us. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Sorry to interrupt you there. No, by all means. Uh, and if you're out in Colorado, you'll see Gordon wearing our blue Juju T-shirt. True story. You better. Yeah. Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at you, Gordon. <laughs> That's right. Anyhow. You won't watch us live, but you'll peruse the archives, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now that we've braided your friend into never watching again. Um, <laughs> uh, we're coming right up on an hour. We have about 30 seconds left. Was there anything else that you would like to say before we bring this uh, ship into harbor, sir? Well, I'd like to thank you and the audience. Uh, when they get around to watching, uh, apparently they're... Uh, We're going to keep doing this live, and if you can't catch it live, that's fine. There's one person here right now, and that's me. 
<laughs> well, uh, but like I said, if you can't, uh, we're also going to post it on YouTube, uh, Dwight and Hoyle. Um, if you found it, this is probably where you're watching it right now. And it'll also be on Ustream. So uh, look forward to, I guess, you know, hearing from you. Um, you can contact us over at bluetooth.com if you would like to uh, have us shout something out for you in Zombie Week. Yep. So uh, that offer is on the table. Yeah. Um, if anyone uh, wants to contact us uh, off the, uh, the live stream there, uh, say something in the comments. We'll uh, try to investigate anything that... Uh, is worth investigating. We, no, no guarantees as to whether we'll take your comments or not, but uh, we'll love to hear your comments and we will uh, respond to those, or you will, because <laughs> <laughs> he's the uh, webmaster there and uh, runs the technology, and which I greatly appreciate because he's doing a great job. And uh, but uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I appreciate everything that uh, everybody's uh, doing for this and we we do have other people that help and support our uh, podcast so yes indeed uh we have a social media person but uh we will like i said we will uh go ahead and sign off at that and uh it's been another another lovely ride here at the cabin in the woods so until next time which will be next weekend at three o'clock sometime either friday or saturday but we will see you then yeah. my name is jonas i'm ron and you have a good week. Definitely. All right.